Hi everybody, this is Weekend Warrior Welding and DIY Projects. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos, ring the bell, and more will be delivered to your inbox. My goal is to do a new video every one or two weeks. This video is an under cabinet ice maker. It is a, I'm going to hold up the manual. Let's see if that works. There it goes. It is a Hoshizaki, the bottom one, C100 BAF ADDS. It is a fairly standard under counter ice maker. I found this thing on next door like a lot of my videos you'll see this didn't uh, didn't cost me anything it was free I checked out the retail price and the retail for this thing with the pump that I'm about to show you is in the neighborhood of about three thousand dollars so I'm pretty pumped I'm not sure if it's going to work or not we're going to have to take it apart and see what it says the lady who gave it to me she said the ice maker works fine, but the pump has some problems. They were remodeling their house as part of a package deal, so they just got rid of this. And she contacted me, so I'm really excited. I think that we're going to be able to get this thing running. Ultimately, the real question is, how much is it going to cost to get it to run? Uh, let me... I have it on a... Uh, I have it on a dolly just because it's the most convenient thing. I don't have a workbench that raises up or lifts down. So I'm going to circle this thing with my camera. And then I'm going to show you the pump. And then we're going to take it apart and see what happens. I'm... Okay. This is what we have. Spin it around a little bit. That's the back. So you can see it's a little bit dirty. There's the power cable that I tucked away. From the front when we open up the door it's basically what happens it swings wide open comes with a scoop which goes right here sorry my lighting is kind of off um, we're gonna go over here this is the pump Okay, so, and pardon the lighting, but this thing, that door is very customizable. That's the inside. Here's a look at the door. I've taken it off, I just set it on my couch over here. It's the inside, and I believe it's very easy to take this thing off, take the wood off. and make it match, at least according to the instructions. All right, so now, spin this thing around, and we are going to remove the back, and let's see what it looks like inside.
And there goes the top. Now let's see what we've got inside this thing. Alright, so there's a... Uh, looks like a piece of the original plastic. Bring this under my light. That does not does not look particularly good. I think this is going to be a little bit bigger of a project than we expected. All right, so let's see how we can disassemble this thing. Get that nastiness out of there. Test the rent, test the parts, and I don't know. Let's just take her apart and see what we can find. So first, we will take off the back. I feel like there's a much easier way to get this thing off for people who know. Apparently, it just unclips, but it gave me a very tough time. So this power clip on the Hoshizaki. Just make sure you know how this thing works before you try to take it apart. All right, so tied up the wire, the twist tie, and I got my camera down so we can look. The tray down here looks okay. There's a little bit of corrosion on that screw. The compressor has a little bit of corrosion coming out of it. Hopefully that thing's still good. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Never seen anything like this before this just covered in white powder oxidation of course I'm not an AC guy or a refrigeration guy or none of this is really my my thing other than I found this thing and my wife said we need one um, this is what it looks like inside. I think we're going to have to clean this piece right down here. It looks very dirty. We're going to have to clean all of that. This looks like some type of drainage pan. Everything in there needs to be cleaned. Everything down here needs to be cleaned. And I guess the next thing we're going to do is vacuum everything out the best I can. And then we'll start disassembling it. Alright, so I did a little bit of research and it seems that this white scale is actually not too abnormal for an ice maker. I bought some descaler and after doing a little bit of research though it seems like what might be the best solution is a wire brush. Just a little brush
though. I just want y'all to see. The wire brush actually makes a pretty big difference on that oxidation. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, wire brush all of that, all of this oxidation around here, there, the whole thing. Let me zoom out for you. All of that, the gear housing, I'm not going to take it off. That's way beyond my skills. Um, definitely not a refrigeration guy, not an AC guy. Don't know how to do that after reading the instructions. But I feel like if I clean that thing off and clean that tray out and clean the bottom tray down there where the power cable is, I'll be ready to hook up the, uh, hook up the water and see what happens. Let me zoom out real fast and show you. I ordered this cleaner. It wasn't too expensive. The Hoshizaki cleaner on uh, Amazon. It's like $85 for a gallon of it. And I don't even know if this thing works. This was 10. We'll see what happens. My main goal is to get as much of that nastiness out of there as possible and as well as in there where the water goes down that just that's just gross I don't want that in there all right I'm gonna try and clean everything off brush it down and see how it looks and I'll be right back I have to say I'm very impressed with the ice machine cleaner I used some wire brushes and the ice machine cleaner down there all around the gearbox that had all of that scale I guess what I originally thought was corrosion is just ice scale but water scale but man it looks so much better see in there that used to be all white and crusty and nasty I guess there's a little bit left I have to get that a little bit out, but the descaler worked absolutely fantastic. That thing looks so much better. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get everything hooked up to the water hose, and sorry about that. And we're gonna test it and see if we can at least get the compressor to turn on, get it to go through an ice making cycle. This is the water inlet. I guess it goes into this tank. And for the most part, everything, is, everything seems pretty clean. Let's get her all rigged up and see how it turns out. All right, so what I've done, I've taken off the front panel and what I really want you to see is right down here on the I don't know what that's called the the coils for the the coolant this thing has just a mat of dust and dirt I'm going to clean that out I'm not going to make you watch it I also want you to see the other thing that I'm going to do here. The person that gave this to me said that the drain pump was sticking and I found so much scale, especially there on that gear housing, that what I want to do is up here on this tank where the water comes in. This is the inlet. There's a piece of metal that goes across, a piece of metal that goes across here. And this inlet sits there. There's a solenoid valve that is activated when you turn the thing on. 
So I want to go in and take the float switch inside here, clean it, uh, take all of the scale off. I also want to do the same thing for the drain that goes down there. I'm going to take those two pieces off. Well, the drain's already off. I'm going to take the uh, tank here off, and once I've got it separated from the main unit, then I'll be back and show you what it looks like to clean out the float switch on both. Okay, so let me explain what I did. This pour spout, I took this off. It's held by three thumb screws. And I also took off the bracket that held up the water tank. And you're going to be absolutely shocked. Well, I guess, I don't know, I was shocked as to what I found in there. Um, coming out of this tank, I don't know if you can see, that is completely plugged. And it looks like a picture of one of your arteries if you had a heart attack. Inside, let's see. And it, it just, it looks like it's full of, I'm not sure if this light is working for you. It just looks like it's full of plaster or something. I would bet that the person that owned this thing previously never cleaned it. The tubes, I don't know if you're going to be able to see in there. And these are the tubes that come out of the water into the ice maker piece of it. And that's just almost completely pl and this thing is and you can it doesn't even bend let's see if I can get some of this stuff out and it's just it's gross if there's anything that I've learned from what I've done today is definitely descale your ice maker if you live in a climate that has or a city that has a you know, well, I don't even know. Just, you need to clean the thing regularly. Look at that. That's gross. And that thing is completely blocking it. Now that I took it out, you can see that part. I have to get all this stuff out. Probably it would be a good idea to just buy new tubes, but I think I can clean this out. Let's see not sure if I'm gonna be able to get this in there where you can see it I'm gonna try my best coming out of the uh, beige cylinder that is the ice maker itself look at that that's where one of the tubes connected that's water scale that's just a big chunk so I'm gonna do my best to descale this whole thing and hopefully I can get all that stuff out of there. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to clean up all these tubes and clean up the, the tank. And I'll be back. Alright, so what I've done, I've used my relatively generic descaler. I've taken all of these pieces out of the tubing. I've got the tubing sitting in this little Tupperware container with some descaler. But what I really wanted to focus on was this. Let's see, there's decent lighting. And that's where you drink out of that. That goes straight into the ice maker. I guess I have to really say it's important to descale your ice maker. 
I'm almost scared to see what's inside that thing, but I would certainly bet that the problem that it's been having is related to scale buildup. Let's get this thing thinned out. Okay, what you see here, I've got a plastic container full of the descaler solution. I got most of the big chunks out of the tank that the, uh, the water initially feeds into and I've just got those soaking in there to try to get the rest of the stuff off. May as well do a good job while I'm in here. Um, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm going to put a little ledge back here, the bracket, to hold, sorry, to hold that, uh, that water tank. I'm gonna put that back in. The ice maker itself has descaler in it. You can't hear it, but if, yeah, I don't think you'll be able to hear it. But inside there, I poured some descaler and it's bubbling and fizzing. I'm trying to get as much of it out as I can. Uh, then when I've run it on a cleaning cycle, we're just going to clean and clean and clean. And um, hopefully we can get all that stuff out of there. And it's just kind of gross. Um, I'm going to put this thing back together, get the tank back on. And I think before I try to clean out the pump, I'm going to hook it up. Uh, the, pick up the, where'd it go? The float switch from inside of the tank there, that thing was not nearly as bad as I thought it was. And I actually am starting to, to think that the lady who had this before thought that the problem was the drain pump. It probably flooded and overflowed, which would explain all of the scale and dirt and everything that we've seen so far. I almost feel like the thing was so dirty that it wasn't the drain pump that was the problem. It's just that the thing flooded up here. I, I can't pinpoint where the leak was because I wasn't there when it happened, but... I really feel like the drain, the drain pump might not have been the problem. So hopefully before I'm done for the day, I'll be able to get it all put back together, hook it up to the hose and see if we can at least get some ice out of it. All right, well, we've got everything pretty much ready to go. Down there, you can see the black box that I'm zooming in on is the drainage pump. It is not connected. You can't see it, but I'm telling you, it's not connected as far as the, the tubing is concerned. I have it connected just electronically, otherwise the machine won't turn on. And zoom back out, sorry about that. Up there at the top, is the one quarter inch inlet. I have here one quarter inch threaded PVC on the other end, rigged up for the garden hose. Cost me $1.49 at Home Depot. I'm going to put a little Teflon tape on the thing, connect it. I've got a garden hose and, <coughs> excuse me, and an extension cord over there by the garage door. As soon as I get this stuff hooked up, we'll turn it on and let's see if we can produce some ice. All right, there's the hose. Everything is connected. I turned it on. There are no leaks. I plan on leaving this thing on overnight. Uh, see how much ice we can produce. Hopefully, assuming that it turns on, I'm going to uh, move my lights and we're going to turn this thing on. Cross your fingers everybody, hope it works. Earlier in the video I showed you all how 
there's, uh, there's coils. I guess that's the condenser. I couldn't think of it earlier. I hope that's the condenser. I'm sure if I'm wrong, somebody please tell me in the comments. That was completely covered with dust. Look what I pulled off of it. Just a sheet of, and it looks like dryer lint, but it was covering that thing completely. You can still see there's a little bit on there that I missed. Uh, I'm assuming that taking this off is going to make it the airflow is going to be better, it's going to cool better. I live in Texas and it's really hot right now so every little extra bit of cooling that we can get helps with an ice maker. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Oh, that was a loud noise. that noise. It's kind of hard to see. I can't really move my lights. This is the valve that fills up the little tank that was so full. Um, that kind of motor humming noise, that's the gear motor in the back, back down there. The thing that was so covered with a scale, it's turning the auger inside here and hopefully this thing starts making ice. I am not going to make you sit through it and watch like I'm about to, but I will be back shortly. Let's cross our fingers and hope something actually comes out. All right, so I put the top and the door back on just because I plan on late letting this thing run overnight. I wanna see how much ice it's going to make. It's been about 15 minutes since the last clip and I'm not sure if you can see in there but there's some ice. It's not a whole lot. I certainly wouldn't drink that until I get this thing completely flushed out and cleaned and descaled but you know what? So far, so good. All right, well, I think this is probably gonna wrap things up for right now. I will probably make a separate video to clean the drain, or sorry, to clean the drain pump and to get the thing installed in my bar. But as of right now, looks like it's moving ice everything's great i'm really happy again pick this thing up from someone a couple neighborhoods over uh, off of the next door app didn't cost me a penny well i did pay a dollar 49 plus tax for the pvc fitting and i did pay probably 15 bucks for that generic um, descaler. Probably going to have to buy a little bit more of that stuff. And we'll probably end up replacing those plastic tubes, hoses, uh, when I fi finish, when I, sorry, I can't talk, when I finish the drain pump. But until then, I hope everybody likes this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share my videos with your friends. I've got some great things coming, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye-bye.